bickering and this battle and right. this fighting that that we have to, we have that to be bigger than that. Absolutely. We have to be more responsible than that. And so experiencing that and being, I think, a victim, both of us, victims of that. And there's so many it more things out there to be victims of. But I don't actually want to ever say that I'm a victim. I'm someone passing through my life that's going to hit the lows, it's going to hit the highs, it's going to hit the successes. Yes, it's but hit it being a victim, you don't have to, to let that conquer you. It's, 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 it's being not, victimized it's not and then being me. empowered. It's not going to conquer me. It's like, it's like in terms of like when I wanted to go in recovery, it's the best thing I ever did in going to recovery. Mm -hmm. I learned so much about myself for years. From I can remember things from when I was three years old. Mm -hmm. And it was it just vi very vividly. And I was like, wow. It's like what from when you were three? Things that like that just affected me now. That I and and at that time when I when it came what into do you mean, my mind. What do you mean by that? When I, I was when I was a child, um, something happened to me, and my whole family was like, no, 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 she's crazy. And sexual abuse. Me. And it wasn't really sexual abuse. It could have been, but I was very uh, much of a child that I um, I came in and I, I I spoke up very much for myself. I was like, mm -hmm. so I screamed out, I was like, go away, and that by being loud. So it was a possibility of sexual yeah, abuse, but, but because she did I was stop loud, it. I got it. It didn't happen, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I just, it's, it's, I was in the desert, and I just was like, you know what? It's something that I want people to know that rehabilitation should be taught in schools, because it's something. Once you know the tools, you know when you're not happy, when to stop and say, I gotta take time out, mm -hmm. when to say, okay, I'm trying to please everybody. I'm not pleased, and this is not working for me, and not be afraid to say. I'm gonna. St I don't. I don't want to do this anymore because there's a lot of like, you get so secure in one thing and you say, okay, if it's over, what do I do? Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of anything anymore. I'm willing to just face things. At one time, you were afraid. Yeah. What I, were you definitely, afraid of? Definitely, I was afraid. Like when I, I just when I was realized I had to go to rehab, and I was like, okay, um, I need to take off a month of work. <gasps> oh my God, I can't take off a month of work because I'm gonna miss this, 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 and I'm gonna miss this. But am I gonna perfume? I'm like. What did you think would happen at that time, the fear, if you I had did to. take off that month? What did it you wasn't think a fear would of not, It wasn't a fear that I was going to... Actually, I don't know. I wouldn't know. You could think your I stock would have gone down if yeah, you would have taken off that month? It's not about stock. Time? It's about emotionally drained, spiritually drained. I would have been no good to myself, mm -hmm. not healthy in mind, not healthy in spirit. Mm -hmm. no, not good to anybody. Do you feel like you've had to put up a lot of defense in this industry to, to survive in an in a insane world? I put up, I put up defense because... I don't want to show my vulnerability. I put what up is defense. Your like it's like, I think people who really know me, Tyra, can my really close friends. You know, I have a big heart. I'm very generous. When I'm very loyal, mm -hmm. and um, I'm happier now than I was when my 20s. I'm mm -hmm. much happier now. I'm much. Why is that? Because the way I was living my life mm -hmm. then was too much. Mm -hmm. I was like trying to make everybody else happy, but I wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. You weren't happy. No. So what did you do when, by not being happy? Because to me, well, I tried to self-medicate and I numb, trying to numb my pain. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, 97 was a really difficult year for me. I lost six friends in very strange <laughs> circumstance, one of them being Johnny Versace. And I think that was a year that was a year when I started to go down because I was really not knowing how to cope with grief. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. You didn't know. And how did you deal with it? You dealt with it by taking... I, I self-medicated myself. Mm -hmm. um, I drank. Um, I went out. I just was like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Don't mm -hmm. worry about me. I'm fine. But each time another drama or another um, uh, um, grief uh, or death came into my life, I wasn't, it wasn't enough time to catch up from the last grief. So it was just one big melting mm -hmm. ball. It just went well down. So when I met you, when I was 17 years old, say until I was a fashion model until about 25 years old, mm -hmm. were you self-medicating yourself at all no, during that time? No, I didn't take my first drug until I was 24 years old. 24, mm -hmm. really? Let's go back to Paris. Let's go back to Paris. I'm 17 years old, mm -hmm. and all these people are saying these negative things. Oh, look out, Naomi. Here comes the new one. Uh oh you better get back. Oh, look, she's trying to look just like you. You better get that. How would you handle that now? If, if you I could, had that could do knowledge it, of... If you could do it all over again, um, how would you handle I think I wouldn't, I just simply, really simply wouldn't have bought into it. I would have just not bought into it and then it would never have escalated. Mm -hmm. I think when you buy into things, people are malicious, people like negative, like you have said and sat here and gone over many times. And I think that only you are the one, if you pay attention, that makes it escalate. Mm -hmm. But I didn't realize 
at that time, that's what would happen. I was like listening because I was not a little older than you, but I was also not in my country. I was also used to, oh, you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. I think, you know, it really is buying into it. Mm -hmm. If I knew then not to buy into it, like I know now, it would never have escalated. And we would never be sitting on this couch right now. Uh, but I am happy to be sitting on this mm -hmm. couch right now. So, you know, I'm happy to, I don't know how many years, years you say 14 years later, mm -hmm. to be sitting here and to wanting to have done this show. And I didn't really tell anybody that I was coming to this show because I didn't want to have to hear what they thought. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd come. They don't know I had to go to L.A. They don't know what I had to come there for. And they will now. <laughs> but um, no, I'm happy that I came. Mm -hmm. I'm happy that you came yeah, too. I really am. I really am too. Are we ready for the audience? Yeah. Okay, because okay. I couldn't have done this with the audience here. So when we come back, we're going to have everybody here, the entire audience, and Naomi and I together for the first time in front of an audience in I don't know how long. A long you said time. 14 years. 14 years. years. 14 years. Yeah, 14 years. 14 years. All right, we'll be right back. that one of my wishes, one of the biggest wishes that I've ever had has come true. I had a conversation with Naomi Campbell, a long, in-depth conversation, and I got a lot of answers, and it has started my healing from all of the devastating rumors and gossip and rivalry and pain that I have experienced. I've started to heal, and I think Naomi has too. And now the audience is here, right? So now I want all of you and all of you to again welcome Miss Naomi Campbell. Before we start, um, however I've affected you, or have you, have you felt that I've affected you, I take my responsibility. I just want to say I'm very proud of you for being a powerful black woman sitting here and doing what you're doing. And please continue. Okay, we. Thank you so much. <laughs> Naomi, thank you so much for saying that because I have to admit, um, before the break, it was. A beginning, beginning of a healing. I know. But I still felt like. Yeah. Absolutely. I still felt like I don't think she's owning up to anything or, you know, and by you just saying that one thing, you have no idea I do. what my heart is doing now. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Guys, sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I'm tearing up right now. You're tearing up right Thank now. You. And one of the uh, things that I didn't know and that you didn't know is that your mom and me have the same exact same ex birthday. birthday. Why, did, why do you think that made you tear up when you found that out? I'm getting through a lot with my mother. Um, my mother has breast cancer and um, also cancer in the arm. 